hidden files, or more commonly just called dot files nowadays, are a core part of running a Linux system. And no matter how much you try to do, no matter how many you try to move, there are always going to be a couple that just are completely stuck there. But what if I told you that hidden files were never meant to exist? What if I told you that all of this time we've been relying on a hack, or better yet, a mistake from 50 years ago? I know that sounds ridiculous, but all the way back in 2012, Rob Pike wrote this blog post on the now defunct Google+. Honestly, considering how many great posts had been made on this site, I have no idea how it never had enough users to actually survive. Now, before we get to this, just a bit of context on who Rob Pike is. So whilst not being involved in Unix literally from the start of the project, he did join Bell Labs and join the Unix team to work on Unix, working alongside people like Ken Thompson, Dennis Ritchie, Brian Kernighan, and all of these other famous names you've heard involved in Unix. And then years later, went on to make Plan 9. And whilst he had a job at Google, he also made the Go programming language. Outside of programming though, he has co-authored Practice of Programming and the Unix programming environment alongside Brian Kernighan. So he's someone who was very keenly involved in Unix during its early days and had discussions with these people who were working on the project. So if we go to our terminal and run ls. Now I'm doing it with a backslash because I have an alias that overlaps with ls, but this is just the regular ls command. If we run this, we just see our regular files and none of the hidden files. If I do the same thing with dash capital A, now I see the hidden files, and if I do dash lowercase a, now I see the hidden files and two extra files, dot and double dot. This is a shorthand way for referring to the current folder and also the parent folder respectively. I know a lot of people still like to use their terminal, and I do as well, but nowadays we also have these fancy GUI file managers where you can just drag and drop things and do all of the operations you want and completely ignore that any of this stuff exists in the background. But back in those early days, this was pretty much the only style of interaction you had. That was until some of the rudimentary GUI started to exist a couple of years later. But when this was all you had, having some very simple speedups like this were a massive improvement to the way you could use your system. But these weren't here from the start. According to Rob Pike, these didn't exist until the version 2 rewrite, which would have been 1972. Prior to that point, the file system wasn't hierarchical, it was using a very different structure. And unlike how it works today, when one initially ran ls, it would actually show the single dot and double dot files but they didn't really need to be there because you know they're going to be in every folder anyway. And when you have limited screen real estate and limited CPU cycles, it makes a lot more sense just to hide them. Maybe have them in an option somewhere, but they definitely don't need to be in the default. So to combat this, what was done is a very, very simple check. A little bit too simple. Initially, everything was written in assembly, but Rob has rewritten the code in C, and I'll show Python examples on the screen as well. So what was done is if the file name starts with dot, skip the file. This achieved the result of skipping the dot and the double dot files, but it also had a side effect. What was supposed to be done is just skipping the dot and the double dot files. So if the name equals dot, or the name equals double dot, then skip it. At the time, the concept of a dot file or a hidden file just didn't exist. Nobody was naming their files with a dot as the first character. They weren't being hidden, so the concept just never came to anybody's mind. So it seemed like this fix worked. The files they were meaning to hide were hidden, it was easy to write, it was less CPU cycles than doing it properly, it did everything it was supposed to do. But it set in motion some really, really long-running implications. First, a bad precedent was set. A lot of other lazy programmers introduced bugs by making the same simplication. 
actual file names beginning with periods are often skipped when they should be counted. You'll see this in the odd application here and there where it's supposed to be counting all of the files, but it decides that hidden files are not really files and, you know, they don't want to be counted. Now, a well-designed good application should have a toggle to also count the hidden files, but sometimes they don't. Second, and much worse, the idea of a hidden or dot file was created. As a consequence, more lazy programmers started dropping files into everyone's home directory. I don't have all that much stuff installed on the machine I'm using to type this, but my home directory has about a hundred dot files and I don't even know what most of them are or whether they are still needed. This was especially true for me when I was trying out a bunch of random applications and basically every one of my videos was trying out new applications. I had so many files that were just being dumped all over the place and I didn't know which ones I still actually needed. Every file name evaluation that goes through my home directory is slowed down by this accumulated sludge. A lot of developers assume that because it's a hidden file, you're just never going to see it. But if you're a tinkerer like I am, your hidden files are always going to be shown. So they're not actually hidden files. And I think this is a big part of the reason why dot file is slowly replacing the usage of hidden file. And not just hidden files, hidden folders as well. You know, you'll see things like your dot config directory and dot local directory and dot mozilla directory and all of these other dot directories. Now, it's one thing to not care and just dump a file or dump a folder in your home directory, but let's not pretend they're actually hidden. I'm pretty sure the concept of a hidden file was an unintended consequence. It was certainly a mistake. How many bugs and wasted CPU cycles and instances of human frustration, not to mention bad design, have resulted from that one small shortcut about 40 years ago? Now, it's uh, 50 years ago. Honestly, I don't think we will ever know. Now, the question is, should anything be done about this? Well, my question to you is, do you have a time machine? Because if you do, then yes. If you do have a time machine, make sure the concept of a hidden file is just never created and will never have this problem to deal with. Actually, people will still probably dump files into your home directory, but at least we can't pretend they are hidden. Nowadays, people have built workflows around this. All of these applications are built around the concept that hidden files exist, that dot files exist, and everything just gets dumped directly into your home directory. Tens of thousands of projects are all built around exactly this concept. Nowadays, there are standards like the XDG base directory, which is why we have things like the .local directory, like the .config directory, which is where those files should be living. So you only have one extra thing in your home directory rather than a hundred extra things. But even so, there is a lot of applications, especially applications around prior to that spec that just don't care. So as he says, Keep that in mind next time you want to cut a corner in your code. It may set forth an over 50 year problem and ends by saying, for those who object that dot .files serve a purpose, I don't dispute that, but counter that it's the files that serve the purpose, not the convention for their names. They could just as easily be in home slash CFG or home slash lib, which is what we did in plan nine, which had no dot files. Lessons can be learned. So instead of having something like home slash dot Mozilla, it could be home slash Mozilla. But if it's going to be home slash Mozilla, why can't it be home slash config slash Mozilla, and maybe home slash local slash data slash Mozilla. Wow, we've achieved the XDG base directory specification just without the dots. Software development can be very messy. Even if it seems like everything all fits nicely together and everything has a reason for existing, sometimes not every design choice is a conscious one. Sometimes it's a mistake that everybody just starts relying on 
and then you can't really do anything about it. This is a big part of the kernel doesn't break user space. Sometimes there are mistakes in the kernel, but when workflows are being built around those mistakes, they're no longer mistakes, they're just a feature that wasn't intended. But let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Do you like dot files? Do you hate them? Did you know about this story already? And anything else you might want to mention? I, I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, that's going to be it for me. So if you like the video, go and like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, subscribe, Sally Barra Pay, link in the description down below. That's going to be it for me. And macOS is a certified Unix system. <laughs>